Welcome to the Boostly Podcasts. Uh, we are doing marketing review time. We haven't done these for a while. This is the first of the year, first of 2024. This is marketing review. This is the Boostly Podcast. So let's get started. Whoa, having a blast, gonna get it on the Boostly Podcast. Boostly like Bruce Lee, cause it's so hard and the T is loose leaf. Making up those rhymes, don't write it, just do it loosely. If you want my respect, you are better put direct. Mm. Here are the words in the podcast. That's what comes next. All right, welcome back. I've got with me James Kinnersley. James, thank you very much for joining me. If you could just do me a massive favor to everybody that's tuning in, just let everybody know a little bit more about you, where you are in the world, and a little bit about your properties before we dig in, please. Sure, thanks for having me today, Mark. Really appreciate it. Love the intro. Um, yeah, so I'm James Kinnersley. I work professionally as a sales director at AirDNA, um, which no doubt your, you and all of your following team here will be pretty familiar with. Um, I've been there over six years now, um, so quite a journey from kind of startup world through to kind of being acquired and being a <clears throat> bit more of a serious operator in the space. Um, on a personal level, um, partly why I'm here with you today is I'm a small time host with a couple of properties, two soon to be three, and I much like many of your customer base, want to make the most of increasing direct bookings and speaking to an expert to ideally get as many um, constructive comments and feedback about how I might make that step. So someone directly kind of in the industry, it's good to get a chance to speak to someone, uh, a real expert, well-regarded like yourself. So thanks for having me. Let's just dive into the properties. Can you please, just for context, let everybody know where they are in the world? Yeah, so I've got <clears throat> currently got two properties in the southern part of Tenerife in the Canary Islands. Um, so some islands off the north co northwest coast of um, Africa, which are Spanish, um, pretty famous, I think, or at least on European level for yeah. for a kind of epic ho holiday guaranteed sort of um, good climate destination year round, I suppose, is what they're famous for, I think. So let's break down the properties themselves. Just give us a little bit of a... a, a a, a synopsis of both of them. Um, what, what are they? Where are they? Who do they service best? What's the avatar? Yeah, I mean, broadly speaking, you, we're still talking a target market of kind of like young families and or um, a kind of middle, a mid-level um, type type kind of end user. Um, one is a three bedroom, two bathroom. Um, when bought was just a three bed, I think it was maybe four beds and one bathroom. So that needed a bit of reform and an and updoing. And then the, the other property was a one bedroom turned into a two with one bath. The model I try to go for, or I'm trying to implement is properties with lifts and swimming pools. So you kind of cater at least to the babies and families department as you much as you do to the oldies, um, perhaps with, uh, and, and even towards the kind of di disability um segment as well so that's ideally the kind of target market i think anyway in terms of the exposure that people are looking for when they go on a trip to that level of destination is to be able to get you know at least pool sun lounger that kind of thing on on site so that, that's, that's that's the model i'm trying to trying to stick with how many years have you had these properties for so i've had the three bedroom for two and a half coming up three years and i've had the other two bedroom for um a little over a year on a year in may i think it will be um and there's a third one on coming which i'm sort of in the process of closing now so that's right next door to the second bedroom the, yes. sorry this the, the two bedroom property so that's kind of the setup so the canaries post covid how has the islands been because everybody knows the canary islands is like i said guaranteed sun pre-2020 you know it's where i used to go for our busman's holidays when i was growing up uh it, you'd always escape there in january because guaranteed sun um what's been the sort of the vibe in the scene and you know obviously with the context is you get a fantastic viewpoint because you can just tap into your data set from you know the day to day to sort of see how everything's going but what is the state yeah. of play right now with the canary islands are people there all the time are people coming back are people taking their time to come back what's the sort of outlook I've actually been really surprised um, in terms of, well, the first performance increase you saw was people ge generally from European, from the European continent, understanding that it's a pretty easy to get to, very family friendly, excellent weather destination. And when that kind of umming and ahhing period of, do we go into long international travel again, was on the table, many people's answer was no, we don't need to entertain the Dubai or the um, longer haul 
um, trip any longer to get the same sort of end product at a relatively cheaper price. So broadly speaking, I thought that was only going to be sort of a, um, a period of time post COVID that 21, 22 explosive period that we had, but actually I've only seen increasing ADRs and booking lead times increase um, from, from, from my two properties. So, I mean, I, I've got to say I'm probably a relatively small sample size in this business, but my forecast for the, what the, ADRs were likely to be was a lot lower than what they are now. I'd say they're probably fifty percent further, um, if it's say increase from what my what my projections initially were. What separates you? Would you say your properties from the others? Have you done anything special, unique to try and say, "Hey, come and book with us"? Instead of like you know, there's on your street, I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, six other places that you can potentially book on Booking.com. So, how are you doing it differently? Would you say? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the three bedroom property, ultimately, you get so much value for money. You're six people and you don't want to pay a villa price. Um, the price point, value for money, good quality of um, already existing reviews and point score has like kept me pretty high up in all the rankings when I've searched even on kind of an incognito or, or different window to make sure I'm not being duped by booking.com. But I'm just mm-hmm. trying to be able to see like where I sit in terms of value for money, six people, right? Like rough price points, like at the high end, like 145, 150 a night. So you divide that by six people, you're getting quite a lot of quite a lot of bang for your buck considering you've got a pool on the roof and the lift and you know, nice quiet location. So it seems like that's quite good value. I think there's more competition in the two bedroom because ultimately there are much more supply of two two bed, one bath locations. But in this case, like I've reformed them to make make sure they're pretty light and airy and um the proximity to being fifteen meters from one of the, the main swimming pool on the ground floor is um, I think a bit of an attraction, but I think the, the two beds are actually a little bit more weak because there's so much more supply in the market. James's properties are on a are on an island, um, you know, northwest of Africa, classed as Spanish for very touristy. So it's a fly to destination for the most part. Um, and, you know, you've got to then look at the context of your properties. Where are they? Who's traveling? And again, the questions that I've asked here. So what's the tech stack? So what are we using to to, to run the business online? with the PMS, uh, we've, we've asked about where the bookings are coming from. Uh, and there's definitely some things that we can dig in about collecting, collecting data. And then we've asked about the properties themselves, who they attract, who they appeal to, and obviously as well, what their, the main selling points are, which again, you can take that and you can answer those questions for yourselves. And please do just don't do it privately, pop them in the chat, pop them in the comments so that we can, we can go for it together. So let's have a little look at them, shall we? We've, we've teased them long enough. So let me hit this share screen button. And I'm going to on, disappoint here. you now. Mark. No, <laughs> not at all. So everybody now can see the property. So we've got the list in here. Um, these are the two that are on um, booking.com. And then the same two we've duplicated up here. So the obvious elephant in the room question I know people are going to be thinking is uh, where's the direct booking website? So where currently are we in your direct booking realm and thinking in terms of when uh, or is there a website? Where's the website, et cetera? We're not there at all. Um, so like it hasn't been been a priority, but it hasn't been executed in terms of getting this thing together. Hence like why we're having this call a bit now to see like where we can go to, take this online. I mean, maybe you've had this same thing with some of your other clients. I know the, the lion's share of people who exist have like only a couple of properties or less than like I have. So I always felt maybe I haven't merited having, you know, or being big enough to get a direct website. And I know that's a bit of a myth. So um, currently we're OTA based and or privately um, with that 5% recognition for, for the, for the direct bonus that I've currently got for those properties. Cool. All right. Well, um, here we go. Let's have a little look. So we've got on booking.com. There's a, the direct booking website will come at some point in the time. Okay. Obviously uh, as you grow blue Island escapes, uh, .com or .co.uk, whatever the domain is that will have a website attached to it. And that'll be a main place that you can send people to. So obviously what we're going to be looking at is how can we grow the, the database, which we'll definitely cover in here. But before that, we, we don't want to, you know, cut our nose off to spite our face. We're getting so much traffic and bookings from booking.com and Airbnb. You've got to be able to uh, have a look at them to sort of see why. So one of the things that I did was I took all of the reviews that I could just quickly see here, the first page of reviews. And this is a nice little tip for everybody. I, I just basically did a blank copy and I pasted them into chat GPT 
and I asked it the, the very simple question, read these reviews and tell me what I'm doing well. And this is a really good thing for everybody to do uh, as you start your 2024 marketing because it will help you with a couple of things. Number one, it will be able to identify what you're doing well and also as well, it can also identify ways of what people are asking for in terms of improvement. So basically, uh, it's just come back here. Based on the reviews that you've received, there are several aspects of your service and properties that are consistently appreciated by the guests. Number one, location. Number two, facilities and amenities. Number three, cleanliness and comfort. Number four, host communication and responsiveness. Internet quality, family group friendly, views and environments. That is the free bed, okay? So when it comes to your your marketing, as in the information that you present, I would be taking these seven things and I would be talking about them. So um, with booking.com, you're obviously limited as such as to what you can present. But one of the things that I think would be really cool is that although you can't amend the text to a certain extent, because they like to keep it very generic, what I would do on Canva is I would go on Canva and I would create an image and I would just list off the main seven things here that you are known for. To just say guests who have stayed here really love our one location, two facilities, amenities, cleaners, comfort, host communication. The reason why you can do that as an image is that you can upload whatever images you want to booking.com. And as they're scrolling through, so this is normal journey of a booking.com guest this will load up and then i'll straight away they'll just click on the first image that comes up and i'll just want to look at all of the images that you have here now the the first thing that comes to mind with me is the cleanliness is obvious you know the nice colors the white and the blue which if i was going to before i even look at property number two i'd expect that branding to stay the same the white and the blue because your domain of blue island escapes the branding there that's obvious white blue that's what i would get from that but one of these images here, I would have it where it's a, a nice white background with blue writing. It's basically saying the reason why our guests love us is because of da 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 da. Because we we um we love to speed read. We love to get as much information as soon as possible. And a nice little image saying that with your branding on it, if you can get away with it of Blue Island Escapes, then it's it just means that the person who's reading it can find out more about you as soon as possible. And everybody needs to realize this when they're doing their search and they're on on one of these OTAs one of the the plus points of marketing on an OTA is that you can be visible from somebody who has never heard about you before that's fantastic because they get tons of traffic they do all the marketing to get people into here the negative point is that when they're on here not only do they see you but they see all of these and what the normal booking process of your of your future potential guest is, is yeah, they'll have you open, but in the next tab, they'll have this one, this one, this one, this one. They'll have like five or six. They have got so many tabs open and they're just trying to have a, a filter in their mind's eye of, okay, so I've started with this. I've got tons of options. Now let's limit it down. And limiting it down could be a number of things. It could be price. It could be reviews. It could be just a uh, location of all of the above. But let's just say we're on yours. And, you know, this is nice, clear pictures, professionally done, all the good stuff, the pulls in the right place, showing the view. But then if you've got something that nobody else is doing, which is an image with text on it, they're going to read it. And then again, we're going to be focusing on what people love, location, facilities, cleanliness. You don't want it to be a massive paragraph, bullet point at most. But then if you do it right, it will stand out. And again, it, it's what could potentially get somebody from going the research phase to the next phase, which is which is booking. So that's one of the first things that I would do um, with this one. And let's have a quick look at the the second one. Yeah, so white and blues, lovely. So the consistent theme. Um, one thing I did notice by looking at this is a lot of these have, are outside shots. So yeah. just go into the back end of the extra net and just move them around. So you want to make sure that Yes, having an exterior shot, pull shot, but have some interiors as well, higher up so they can click into it more. Like things like yeah. like this, et cetera. That, that's lovely. But again, the same thing. Come into your um your reviews here on um on bookings. Just literally drag, drag them all the way down here. And I'm only doing page one just for speed, but then you can do page two, page three, page four. Start off a, a new chat. 
and again, say the same thing, uh, read all of these reviews, what I'm doing well. So again, it's doing exactly the same thing, but the reason why we do a different tab here is because it's a total different property. If I pasted that into the other one, it would get confused with the two of them together. So we're starting a brand new chat here. So again, apartment quality and cleanliness, location, facilities, host interaction, family-friendly environment, safe and secure, value for money. So again, um, consistent fees, consistent vibes, fantastic. Uh, and again, I would just take that, take those bullet points, go into Canva, nice white background, blue wording, and just say, this is why our guests love us. So it just gives you that bit to stand out. Now, um, we take that over to Airbnb. And the cool thing about Airbnb is that you actually can put in so much more than what you do on booking.com. So you've got the ability to take full advantage of this description here. You can add so much more and it can be um, bespoke to each one. So I would definitely go in and go onto Airbnb and just fill it out properly. Make sure every little aspect is ticked. All the things that you do well is ticked. Um, I would look to amend the images around just to see what sticks. And the cool thing about Airbnb is it tells you, like, these are the people that land on your page. This is who sticks around, et cetera. All of that information is, is crucial. Um, but yeah, I'd be getting rid of anything that's got a cloudy sky. Um, and then just, yeah, just like amending the pictures around. Un unlike um, booking.com, I always say with images, like less is more. Like with booking.com, they want you to put tons in as possible. But with Airbnb, what I'd be looking to do is to, instead of having lots of the same pictures, like two patio shots, have one patio shot, but then use the caption, you get the ability to add a caption, to really explain what they're, they're looking at. The more you can do that for each one. So let's say you're going to have 20 pictures max on, on Airbnb for here. Um, say it's say it's this shot here, you're telling the person what they're looking at. So instead of just saying kitchen, just put, uh, this is our uh, fully stocked kitchen. It comes with a, a coffee bar. Uh, it comes with a uh, Spanish toaster. It comes with a uh, hob and extractor fan, kettle. So they're literally, it's telling them what they're looking at. Uh, you can use AI to write this out. So you can basically drag this image, put it into AI and say, describe what you see here for an Airbnb caption. Airbnb now are also having um, AI caption generator built in, which is really cool. So it saves you a, an extra job to do. Um, but I would definitely be taking this kind of information and using it as the base of your description for, for Airbnb. Because with booking.com, you can't just list off these seven things. It would be, this is what you get when you stay with us. Because this the way that they go on Airbnb and the way they look is that they come in. Yes, they'll click at the pictures because they want to see more, which is great. But then they'll actually go and read the description and then they'll go, you know, the reviews and then they'll go the price. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. No, you're right to already use, use and showcase the stuff you've already got a write up on rather than, you know, making stuff up. You can actually, you can use already what there, what there is. Yeah, 100%. So the, the, the first things first is obviously we want to go down the route of getting to 65% diary bookings. That's the goal for everybody. But before that, we've got to make sure that what we have in place is always optimized. Anything that's working, we've got to optimize it. There's another, there's another thing that I'd like for you to do. So the first thing, go in and update your Airbnb, fill it out, reduce the pictures, make it quality over quantity. Um, check if that's the right title. Again, run these variations through ChatGPT. And if you wanted to with, with ChatGPT, you could come and look at the um, the area as a whole. So this is another little tip that everybody can do. So if I come into here and I'm gonna search location and I'm just gonna put these sort of dates in. <laughs> right, so we're down here. And let's just try and limit it so it's very similar to what you have. So it's two bed, Sorry, two bedrooms, two beds, uh, maximum price. Your average price is between 100 and 300 a night. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. It's never as high as 300 between, so let's, let's, let's say, like that. 95 pounds and 150 pounds, something like that. Cool. Let's just do somewhere 
along the sides here. Um, so it's two beds, two bedrooms and one two bath. beds. Is that right? Yeah, and one bath. And one bath. Okay, so let's have a little quick look. I have to zoom out a little bit. Right, now it's got availability. Let me just refresh this so it's more later on in the year. All right. The average here it's saying is that. So let's just go with that. The reason why I'm saying this, that's not as good as yours. Any type. It looks like it's really busy in this area <laughs> <laughs> on uh, on these channels. Let's zoom out a little bit. What have we got? Let me see. I mean, I know I've got availability from like, yeah, end of any, anywhere from the 17th of March, to the end of March through to yeah, 17th of March onwards and all of April I'm available. So it should, should, should appear okay. theoretically. Uh, we're going to do the entire property, entire home. We're going to do two beds, two things. All right. Here we go. So what have we got? Right. So um, the reason why I was doing that, let's just pick this one here. Let's just say this is like what you've identified as being one of the best in the area. It's obviously not, yeah. but let's just say what it is. What you can do to find out what these are doing so well, again, you can drag all of their reviews. So you do see all of these. If you do copy an A, hit, hit copy on it. So control and A high, highlights all the reviews. Copy them all. And then this is the, this is the same one here and go... Uh, these are a reviews left from a competitor in the area. Can you highlight what these are doing so well? And again, what you can do is you can go, well, this is exactly what uh, our competition is doing, like work-friendly amenities. That's a big one. So I personally would assume the Canary Islands right now with digital nomads, people that can go at any point of the year, they can go for a week, they can still work. What would they be looking for? And work-friendly amenities is coming up is 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 um is something that I'm thinking, okay, that might match what's behind the data and the numbers. Well equipped, comfortable accommodation, cleanliness secure, host communication. So you're already doing the communications, uh, value for money, special touches. So the welcoming gourmet basket and the host willingness to share information about tips. That's a cool one. So like a, a welcome basket could be a good thing to add in. Not a massive expense, but again, if you put the price up a little bit, you can offset the cost there. You're already doing the cleanliness. Uh, the work friendly amenities could be a, an interesting one. And again, with work friendly amenities, it doesn't have to be um a massive up upheaval you've technically already got that here with a desk and a screen you know what i mean but you can go onto your airbnb listing and you can say we've got a work-friendly space and you just take a picture of it and say this is the work-friendly space and again with that you would come up more in the filters of said airbnb um and obviously then you can just double check that with with our dna and say okay well how many of these searches are coming up x y and z but it's a really yeah. handy tool to, to, to sort of note of because it'll help you amend your listing to suit what the type of person that is traveling to the area would be. Okay. And, you know, if other people aren't usually providing a welcome pack or a welcome gift bag, one of the big things that I talk about is that when everybody zigs, you zag. So if nobody else is doing a welcome basket, if no one else is, is doing something cool at check-in, Again, Unreasonable Hospitality, that book by Will Goddard is a fantastic book. Everybody's read it, um, but it's like, how do we put it into practice? So when if nobody else is offering a welcome basket, how can you stand out from the rest, offer a welcome basket and have some cool things in there, whether it's teas and coffees or chocolates or, or whatever it would be, is a cool thing to provide because it instantly then makes separates you from everybody else. And you can talk about it as well, which is cool. So the first things first, in terms of bookings, in terms of, more awareness in terms of turning a guest into an influencer and an influencer into a super fan. What we want to be doing is, is, you know, really tapping into what's working booking.com Airbnb we've established is working. How can we improve it? 
we can't amend the text on booking.com, but we can definitely add in a, an image with text. We can pimp out our Airbnb list and a bit more. So it's more visible because there's definitely a lot of people using that channel um, every single every single day, every single month. And then the next aspect, the final aspect, aspect as we finish up is how can we then start to make changes in the back end that will make sure that we can increase our direct bookings? So the first things first, I'm going to encourage you to watch this free video. So it's boostly.co.uk forward slash list insights. It will take you to a, a YouTube video. Most easy. This is a, a great one to watch because on here, it will show you a tactic that takes about 40 minutes, but it will help uncover any potential site that you are not listed on. So one of the things that I know to be true, especially about German and Dutch and French guests, is that they don't always use the the free typical OTAs that we know of, Booking.com, Verbo, Airbnb. There are big listing sites in Holland, for example, that are um, catered for Dutch people who are traveling to the Canaries on Spain. There are, they'll be the same in Germany and France, but the way to identify that is by running this search here. So the first thing, try and incorporate any sites that you aren't tapped into and listed on to get them on there. Obviously, the main, the major thing for you is to get your PMS up and running. So get up listing up and running. That's going to be key because then it means that you can then be um, on more sites and with the without the threat of double bookings, which is which is a big one. Yeah. And the next thing, the final thing, is to start to uh, grow yeah. this this database and actually do some with it. So you've got three hundred, which is amazing. Yeah. One of the things that I would look to do would be to create a Google form. And the form would look like this. And to not put as much pressure on your uh, staff to get this information, you can send this out at the point of booking. So when the booking comes in, you can have an automated message and it's the same one that goes out on booking.com, that goes out on Airbnb or wherever the sites you're going to be listed, just to say, hey, um, to speed up your check-in process, please fill in this form. And again, check in, especially if someone's flown in, the last thing they want to be doing is faffing around filling in forms when they can have it all done at the point of booking. So the form will be email, first name, last name, phone number, number of people in the party, check-in date. And then you can ask in these bonus questions as well. The most part of his form, the most thing that's really important for is these first five questions. Email, phone number being one. But these two here are, are really cool as well. So what was the deciding factor in why you picked us as your place to stay? So at the point of booking, you're asking them, why us? And they'll tell you value, location, word of mouth, saw you on Instagram, whatever it may be, right? Um, and then the second one is, I mean, you could have, are you celebrating a special occasion with us? Or you could have whatever you want in there. It could be something totally different. It's like, um, you know, where, you know, special occasions one, or it could be, are you, is this a work trip or is this a leisure trip? Or a combination of both is it like a a pleasure you know is it like and you can start to then get really key bits of information that will help you with your with your property or properties or future properties that you take on board um so this google form will take five minutes you can easily send it out and it'll go at the point of at the point of booking um and then obviously elephant in a room get your mailchimp up and running and just start to communicate with previous guests that have signed up to receive emails from you so maybe once a month or once every two months or you know no more than once every three months send out emails just talking about the island talking about the area the town if the big carnival's coming up or, or whatever's coming up just keep people up to date because people are always looking for an escape to the canaries and it's an easily accessible island and even if they're working, again, this workcation thing is, is massive at the moment. But you just got to keep top of mind because when you're top of mind and they're going, right, I'm going to come back to this part of Tenerife, they'll know to stay with Blue Island Escapes instead of going with somebody else. Yeah. But it's just proactive things. So there's some nice little things to be starting with there. Obviously, the website um, is, a, is, a, is a great point of call. Um, getting the branding name. I love Blue Island Escapes. I think you've got the white and the blue, which is your colors, your logo. Yeah, yeah the, cool, the cool thing about ChatGPT and Canva now, the logo can be literally created <laughs> via via that. And uh, get your PMS up, listen up and running. 
Start to collect that Google form at the point of booking because then you've got it down and it's listed and it's there. Start to use it and go in and, and really take full advantage of all of the amenities and the, and the extra net of booking.com and fill out your Airbnb listings. Perfect. So some nice little homework there. Plenty for me to get it, be getting on with, Mark. <laughs> uh, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll send a, a little recap of, uh, of, of this. I'll send it to you, um, uh, to your emails, just little things you can get cracking on with. But what yeah. as well, what I would love for everybody to do who is tuning in at home is to think, how can you take this and how can you put it into, into action? With the Google form, it's five minutes to set up and you copy and paste the link from there into your Airbnb messages or your booking.com automatic messages or when Uplisting is up and running, a cool part of Uplisting is that you can do a a um, a automated message that goes from Uplisting to your PMS, uh, to your booking engines for you. So you can do it there once and you can do it at the point of booking. Super simple to do. Um, there's, there's more videos on the YouTube channel showing you how to exactly implement that. Uh, but that's really effective because then you can get tons of information uh, about your guest at the point of booking, which is really cool. Having a blast, gonna get it on the Bruce Lee podcast. Bruce Lee like Bruce Lee, cause it's so hard and the T is loose leaf. Making up those rhymes, don't write it, just do it loosely.